How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming, and welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the character generator, specifically all of the parts of the generator, the new thing that they have over here on the offset, um, also how to export uh, and import all of your stuff through the face, the walking, the damage, the battler, uh, the JSON for the actual settings, uh, everything. So let's take a look at the character generator. Uh, new from M. V to MZ, they've added a kid tab, so you actually have a, uh, a new base with a bunch of uh, children sprites, which is really cool. So I, I would imagine in the next iteration they would do male kid, female kid. But anyway, I think the generator has undergone massive improvements. I really like what they've done with the changes inside the character generator, specifically the offset. For example, if we think the eyes are too high or too low, we can go into the eyes. Of course, we can change them if we want to, but then we can offset them. This is the new thing. So you can bring them down to the right. It, I mean, obviously that looks pretty weird. Realistically, you're not going to need more than that. So the offset is super cool, but it limits you to only eight pixels in any said direction. We don't have variation for the kid on the faces, but if you go to female, you have quite a few. And then if you go to male, you have even more. You can change the skin color to be whatever you want. Let's make this girl blue. Let's give her some, uh, I like her hair. Actually, hers is really nice. I'll, I'll keep that, it's really cute. Uh, let's change the color to this brown color. And then we have a sub color. Sometimes you get hair bands or stuff like that that will adjust on the fly. For ears, we have the normal human ears and then we have like some elongated elf ears. You kind of get the point, right? You can change all of your stuff around. A lot of noses, <laughs> there's a ton of noses this time around. Let's look at these, wow. So many mouths this time. So many, so many. These look pretty good too. The generator is going to allow for a lot more expression type. Oh, it's like makeup. You can put like some makeup on them. And then we have our ears, beast ears, all kinds of different animal ears. Oh, they added new wings. Oh, I love this. This is great. Does the wing color? Oh, the wing has its own independent color. So that's cool. And now looking at our clothing. Looks like they've added a lot more clothing styles, which is fantastic. Subcolor. Oh, so you can really go crazy with the colors of the clothing. I liked that. It's a different outfits. She got a nice little scarf there. We'll be using this one in some games and probably using Stella's in some other games. For accessories, we have feathers in the hair, a bow tie, a bandana, some glasses, like a Phantom of the Opera type glasses, and then some see-through glasses. Kind of looks like a mask. It's like a mask. It's a mask. Nice. And then another accessory, the wizard cap. Cool. We got like the do-rag going on. And of course, my favorite, the pot on your head. Can you change the color of the pan? Oh my god, you can change the color of the pan. That is amazing. She's going to have a golden pan. Time to have a golden pan on your head. So. You have all these options to make your character. We made a custom character. All of these have offsets if you want to offset them. In fact, let's experiment with uh, one of these accessory offsets. Let's get the pan and, and bring it down. So if we bring the pan down, it kind of like looks like it's in our head. <laughs> we don't really want that. So if, if you add this to your character and you're one pixel off, you can bring it up and make sure that it's a... Uh, it's properly seated. We also have the randomize, but before I hit the randomize a bunch of times, I wanna go over all of the ways that you can save your work, right? We put all this time into making a character and we want to save our work and that way we can use it in our game. Let's go through it systematically. For the face image, you click on the face image button and then we're gonna click on the export button because the export is going to save it to your hard drive. So we have a basic face set, which holds eight expressions. So we're gonna export that. I'm gonna call her Lou. Le. Lule. That's her name. So I'm just going to hit enter and that's going to save it in all of these buttons will go exactly where they're supposed to be. So this is a face set. So it will automatically save inside your IMG faces folder. What happens if you want to have multiple faces of multiple expressions? Well, here's how you do that. Go to back to the face and you can edit. We change her mouth. So she's smiling now. We want to see she's happy. So we're going to go to face image again. This time we're going to use the import button. So we click the import. We're going to take the same one we just saved. I called it Lule. And then I'm going to select on a different spot that's not on one that's already taken. So if I put it here, it's going to override. If we put it anywhere else, you'll see that we have two of them now. Now we have expression. It won't save unless we export and overwrite. So we're going to do that. We click the export. We're going to click on the same one that we imported, the Lule, and we're going to save it. It's going to say, hey, you already have this one. Do you want to use this one as the same name? And we want to say yes here because it was only one face set before and now it's two face sets. So we can continue on. Let's change her mouth to maybe she's not feeling it she's just not in the mood right now so then we're gonna do face images we're gonna import the Lule 
and then we're going to select on another free slot and then we're going to export and then we're going to select on the lule and then we're going to save it and then we're going to override it and then now we have three of them in there you can continue this process until your character has all of the expressions that you want her or him to have so let's move on to the walking so you'll see here that this is a sprite sheet for the down left right and up and you can see that there's empty space for up to eight different ones so what you would do for this you can have a sprite sheet for each one of them, or you can put up to eight characters on one sprite sheet. So if you wanted to do it with just one character, you can export right here and then you'll name it. So we'll call this Lule. And what's cool is we can call it the same name uh, because now we're not inside the IMG faces. We're actually inside the IMG characters because the button will automatically default you to the right folder where it's supposed to be saved. So there's no folder navigation required. So we're just going to call this Lule. We're going to hit close. Then we're gonna click on the damaged character. Now this is going to be if the character falls down and you wanna have them like knocked out or something on like for a cutscene, but you, it doesn't make sense to have this on its own. We're gonna do the same process that we did with the face set. We're going to import the Lule. A good trick I like to use is type in the first letter and a lot of the times it will pop up with what it was. So I didn't wanna search for it. So I just typed in L and you'll see that it popped up Lule right there. So I can click on that and open it. And now I have the one that we loaded plus I can put down the damage sprite so I'm gonna put the damage sprite on this set right here and I'm gonna export that and I'm gonna export it as the same thing I'm gonna type in L and it'll remember the name I click on the name I hit save it's gonna ask if you want to overwrite it and we're gonna do that then we're gonna move on and do the same thing for the battler so we export this and once again it'll default to the right directory IMG SV underscore actors for this one and we'll call this Lule and we'll save her in there and the battler is pretty easy, that's all it is for there. And then for the settings, you can save this as a JSON file. You can make a new folder and put all your characters in there if you want. The reason why you might wanna do this is maybe later on you've made all your artwork and you've saved them all, but you wanna change the eye color of one of your sprites. Well, you'd have to randomly find or rebuild the, the same exact character that you did to change something on it after you've exported. So we're gonna export a JSON as well in case we wanna change like an eye color. We can easily load it, change the eye color, export, 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 export. So we'll call this one lule.json. One very important thing to note about loading your character's JSON file is it really depends on what tab you're on. So if you wanna load your character, you have to be on the right tab. For example, if we tried to load Lelu on like the female tab, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't really do anything because it's not the right data. The same thing for this. If we try to load, you can see it won't work. We have to go to Kid where we made and saved Lule to load her back up. And that's how we do it. So let's take a look at the randomize, a really fun feature that I think is fantastic. It'll save you a lot of time making characters. This is a cool character. And that's it for the character generator. But there's one more thing I wanna go over in this tutorial and that is how to take the characters that you made in the generator and put them into your database. Ah yes, it's time for the database. So we're only going to dip our toes in the database today, but uh, we're gonna look at the actors tab. So we made some new characters. We can use them as NPCs if we wanted to use them as NPCs by right clicking a new event, going over to the image, selecting the name that we saved the character as. It should be in here automatically. So here's Lule and we can make Lule the NPC. So now we have Lule, the character we just created inside the character creator, as an NPC, which is really cool. However, if you want to use this artwork as an actor in your party, you just go over to Actors inside your database tab. You click on that little gray cog wheel, change our maximum, and add a new spot. Let's double click and find Lule's face. Let's give her this happy smiley face. Let's give her her character. Boom. She, it's her walking sprite. And here is her battler sprite. Bang. So she is now a character that we just created on the fly. And if you want to add Lule to the party, you just go to System 1 under Starting Party. You can double click here and select Lule. So now when you start the game, you'll have Lule. One more thing, if you want to add a party member, you can always open up your events. Under Tab 1, you'll see Party, Change Party Members. And then from here, you can 
add Lule to the party. You can also remove Lule from the party. The initialize checkbox will revert the character back to what is in the database. You wouldn't want to remove a party member, then add them again as initialized unless you wanted them to start back at level one or wherever they start in the database. Because it's possible to add a party member and then take them away. And then when you add the party member again, he or she will remember all of the levels they've gained, the skills they've gained, the equipment that they've had. They should retain all of that stuff unless you check initialize. So you're not going to initialize unless you're like at the beginning of the game or it's the very first time that they're joining or you're restarting that character back down to its basic information that's stored on this tab right here. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Dejica for sponsoring this video and tutorial series. Thank you to T, my lovely wife, for helping me tackle all of these complicated things. And thank you to you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, come join us on Discord, and stay tuned for another tutorial from T. Bye-bye.